Hey guys and welcome to a new video. Today I want to make a small little special video which is frequently asked question about the EK Ethereal Knives Ignite Elementalist and oh boy I'm having such a blast with this build and I I mean I maybe say that sometimes that this is like one of my favorite builds of all time but I think this build has everything. This is like the trifactor of PUE. I think it is very fast, insanely good mapper, a lot of clear speed. Um, it is decently tanky as well. It is capable of doing all the content and that includes 100% daily. It includes uber pinnacle bosses as well as simulacrum up to wave 30. And I think this is in nowadays standards um, in a modern PUE, better said with arch nemesis and stuff, a very hard task to do and I personally if you would ask me oh MBX I need a build that can do all content with speed farming and everything I wouldn't even know what to say until I found this build uh, from uh, David and luckily for me um, David actually um, came into the stream um, after I posted the last video about the build uh, and now we're talking on discord a lot trying to like improve the build now actually trying to add more layers of defense and just trying out a lot of things uh, combined we do craft together we do like theory crafting pu being together trying to make this build the best build possible but before we say anything further before i go over the gearing and stuff like that and now i'm actually playing with an obliteration wand because the end game version would have an um, an explody bow and these are actually going for like 120 divines for the base which is kind of ridiculous because when he started the build it was like five to ten divines then crouching tuna made his like uh his blade vortex build that also uses an explodey base and then the price went up to like 30 40 divines then i uploaded the video and all of a sudden overnight now the bow is like 150 divines for the base and obviously that makes it very hard to afford very hard to acquire and that's why i actually wrote down a list of a lot of questions that i get every single day on the street uh, on the stream yeah on the streets now, i'm not leaving the house here um, for example, how much currency do I need? Uh, do I need a headhunter or mage blood? Um, what are mandatory items? How does this build scale its damage? What are the layers of defense? How do you trigger the chain explosions? I cannot afford an explosive base bow. Any substitutions? Can this build be played with other ascendancies? How do I level this build? What content can this build do? Um, I always end up dying with zero energy shield. What about Arsenal Gentle Touch versus Obliteration versus the Explody Bow? Why Eldritch Battery and Mind of a Matter? Can this build be be played as a Magic Finder and possible upgrade path? Yo, I'm stuck with my current um, gear. What is the next upgrade I should look out for? So these are the questions I want to answer. But first of all, let's run a map showcase so you see um, how the current build for me looks like. It's way not done. Like it's it's not even remotely close to done. I probably have like three items that i would consider end game but the rest uh, still needs to be upgraded needs to be crafted a lot of things that i need to do but i'm so happy with the build and i even went from like level 93 to 96 just by doing all content i'm currently farming contracts here for uh, the heist and stuff so you can literally do all content and now with the obliteration wand i'm actually having an item that is a chaos worth okay so even if you go for a perfect roll i'm not sure how much they are going for maybe like five chaos or something and i'm happy or pretty positive to say that the flippers will have no chance of buying all the obliterations on the market so they start as well in like 100 divines i highly doubt that but other than that i think um, that's why it's so important for me to talk about what is mandatory about the gear what is necessary right and what are the kind of items that would make the build substantially better and stronger for the yeah the price ticket that they have because the build is getting more expensive by the day which is kind of sad but it just shows how people enjoy the build and they want to play that they see the videos they see me playing uh, this on stream you know having these like massive explosions even doing all bosses and everything it seems like this build based on like how to gear it doesn't really have any problems you know and you can play it and um, whatever you want as you see boss damage like whatever you know you just inflict a half to ignite thanks to um arcanist brand with hydrosphere projectiles chain off the ethereal knives is a projectile so it chains off the hydrosphere hitting the boss getting a massive damage boost thanks to the gloom fang and 
I cannot stress it enough that this build is just amazing. I am so happy that I found this build on YouTube and now basically um, working with the creator um, to make like the possible best version of it. And yeah, I just really, really enjoy this build. And other than other builds where I'm like putting it together, playing it, still thinking, oh, that's cool. Still thinking it's uh, is a great build and whatnot, but I'm always thinking about what is the next build that I want to play, right? And since I discovered this build, since I'm playing this build, actually, I, I just want to min-max this from the toes to the head, you know, like from toes to here. I just want to like min-max this build so it can actually do all the content that I plan to do. Then I can maybe like farm simulacrums and I think the way this build clears, it might actually be like one of the strongest simulacrum farmers. And David recently uploaded a video of his um, character. I mean, his version, you have to think about it. It's like, obviously he did not spend that much because um, when he started the build, it was like rather cheap. Um, yeah, rather cheap, but now it's like probably... So in the current state, I would say his gear is probably three, four, five hundred divines worth, right? But his gear uh, or his level of gear, he can do all content. He uploaded videos about uh, Wave 30 Simulacrum, for example, and he just literally... Um, one tapped more or less causes an omniphobia just because um, there is a lot of monsters, he, he kills them, the, the explosion goes off, the explosions will inflict a massive ignite onto Kosis and while he's actually focusing on just clearing um, as fast as possible to get the most loot rewards, Kosis just died next to, like he was never focusing it, right? So this is like one of the specialities more or less with like this very massive ignites and it's just like a joy to play. Good. As you saw from the map showcase, this was with an obliteration wand. I don't think it's like too much off of the exploding base, just that this one is a chaos or mine with area effect was like one divine um, compared to the exploding bo uh, bow base, which is like a hundred, I don't know, like it, it can be a hundred divines, can be 150. They are going up and down. It's like, it's it's a literal roller coaster. So I really want to show some uh, substitutions to that. Good. And I would say, let's start from the top to the bottom. And I personally, this is like from, I'm going to answer these things based on my personal experience from the last three days of playing this with having, starting off with a tabula rasa and a gold rim and a headhunter basically, since I spent all my currency buying a headhunter until to a point where I upgraded um, to a skin of the loyal now with um, adding in spell suppression and really like trying to uh, get more out of the character on what it already was, okay? So... I really encourage you to uh, read the comments because there is a lot of people that are also playing the build that have maybe a better idea and maybe I answered something wrong. So uh, once you're done watching the video, maybe you'll scroll down and then I most likely have pinned um, all the comments where I think they have good information in there that will help you out as well. Good. How much currency do I need to start this build? First question, I personally, without um, being crazy here, I think probably five divines. And the reason for that is it literally doesn't really need a lot. You want to have the Gloomfang amulet with the highest possible um, non-chaos is extra chaos damage because this is how we generate so much damage when we chain off our, um, what do you say, our uh, projectiles from the Hydrosphere. So, here. So, basically, I'm just like, if here's the boss, you know, I just use an, e an EK, it hits the Hydrosphere, the projectile chains off the Hydrosphere, hits the boss, and gets this massive um, projectiles that half chain gain 42% of non-chaos damage as extra chaos damage. And being a elementalist, having the Shaper um, of Flames means all damage can ignite, and hits always will ignite. It means 100% chance to ignite, as well as my chaos damage ignites, my fire, my cold, everything combined. So this extra portion of chaos damage will give me a lot of extra damage to inflict massive, disgusting ignites that are just rotting um, bosses away. So what do I think is actually necessary? I think a Gloomfang amulet for this extra damage. Um, here, this is already anointed with charisma. This is my current version, but this is like, 5 to 10 chaos, obviously, the better the roll is, the more damage you're going to get out of it. But as an enabling version, if you even have the lowest roll possible, throw some um, physical, um, I think it's noxious catalyst that um, gets the roll up from, like, my version from 35% to 42, just as an extra damage here, right? This is necessary. Then, the next part, we are using ethereal knives, which is a physical spell. So we want to convert the physical damage because what Gloomfang does is says 
non-chaos as extra chaos. So if I do a thousand physical damage, it is non-chaos since it's physical damage, I'm getting an extra damage as chaos. If I convert from physical into cold, um, then the cold damage will also leave an extra chaos damage. And then we convert into fire from cold with cold to fire support, and we're gonna leave another extra damage, or the Gloomfang will give us extra more damage from our fire portion. It is very similar to the way Eternity Shroud works, where we convert from one stage to the next and, and get more and more of this extra chaos damage. And so that's why you wanna um, get into conversion. And the way of converting 100% of your damage is a three-step program. First of all, you go and take the Cold Mastery over here, which converts 40% of your physical damage into cold damage. Next up is the Hatred Watcher Zyme mod that gets up to like 40% physical damage converted um, to cold damage while affected by Hatred. We're running Hatred, so that's another like up to 40%. And then you have the Gloves Craft, which is a prefix that you can do on the crafting bench or even further if you want to, which I do not recommend, but there is also an Searing Exarch or Eater of Worlds implicit that also gives you conversion. So here's the thing, you want to get to 100% conversion. So that means with a 25 craft that you can definitely afford on your crafting bench because it is um, like 4 chaos craft, so it shouldn't be a problem to get a 25 roll over here. And there is even, um, if I'm not mistaken, there is even a delve modifier that can get up to 35. So what you want to do is your 40% from your um, mastery plus 25 is 65, so you need a Watcher's Eye with at least a 35 roll to get the 100%. It doesn't need to be higher than that, um, or even when you have the um, the Delve modifier, which gets up to like 35, or using an Implicit, which I do not recommend, um, but still you have multiple ways of converting the damage. I was playing with Arsenal's Gentle Touch until today, and I did not have. I had the 79% uh, from the Watchers plus the... Um, physical damage converted, so yes, I was losing out on a lot of damage just because I did not have the full conversion, and less conversion means less cold damage, means less fire damage based on the cold to fire support, means less overall chaos damage, but my damage was still fair enough to grind up to like 60% daily maps, and I didn't really bother too much. It was just today that I swapped to an obliteration wand which frees up my rare gloves so I can actually inflict the fire exposure and the conversion. So even though I did not have the full conversion, I was still having enough damage to uh, conquer the majority of the game. And no, I'm not talking about Simulacrum 30. I'm not talking about Uber Pinnacle bosses here, okay? It is very important to keep in mind that the lower your investment is, the less expectations you're allowed to have. There is no build that has like a three divine investment that will kill all endgame bosses with your eyes closed. This just doesn't exist, you know? This is not... You know, this is part of Excel. The more you invest, the more damage, the more tankiness, the more, the, the faster, the whatever, you know, the more, the better, right? But if you, if you really scrap it down to the bare bones, then you're not allowed to complain that you are dying like five times a map if you're running um, like Eldritch Altars tier 16, 20, 40% Delirious with maybe Wrath of the Cosmos and you clicked on a couple of Altars and you complain about dying with a five Divines build. The problem is, every other five divines build will result in the same, okay? So it really gets down to the point where you wanna have a version where you can start farming tier 16 maps or T14 plus based on your void stones to then generate passive incomes, farming heist, farming um, uh, harvest, I mean, do strong box, do essences, do anything that grants you currency, okay? And then the more currency you get, the better upgrades, the better gear you will have, and this will allow you to run harder content, okay? Keep that in mind. If you only have five divines, do not be mad if your build dies, because I can guarantee you almost every other build that you would play for five divines will result into the same outcome. That's like, for me, very important. Um, so you understand that. So that's why I say, when it comes down to the bare bones, what do you need? A Gloom Fang for a couple Chaos. You want to have the conversion as much as possible, preferably 100%. If not, it's not the end of the world. But there will be a Hatred Watcher's Eye, um, the Gloves Craft, as well as the um, Mastery over here with the physical converted into Cold Damage. Another thing that people might wonder, why do you not go for Lightning Conversion? So physical into Lightning, into Cold, into Fire, which would technically result into a higher DPS on theory, on paper, but in the end it is not. Because 
we would need to run Wrath on top of that, which has the physical converted to lightning and stuff, and you are forced to run bet, uh, Call of the Brotherhood rings to convert 96% of the lightning damage into cold to then convert into fire. And that means we have to sacrifice both ring slots. And if we take a Polaric Devastation, cover enemies in Ash is actually a 20% increased fire damage taken by the enemy, which is basically 20% more damage for Ignite, as well as a second ring that can have potentially a flammability curse um, that you're also not going to get with the Call of the Brotherhood rings. And those two things are actually, in my opinion, and probably on paper as well, I did not PUB it, um, but it should be a lot stronger because Hatred is an aura that actually gives us a lot of damage while Wrath is not doing anything for us, okay? Good. So that's why I say, I would say, five Divines or whatever the Hatred Conversion Jewel is going for, but it shouldn't be too expensive to get something like that going. And then it's typically the same thing as always, Fan the Flames, um, which you can get on like a Cluster Jewel as well as like on a Megalomaniac for being like super cheap. For example, like I used here, Dorianis less than Fan the Flames, I think it was like 50 Chaos or a One Divine Jewel or whatever. You just need Fan the Flames, can also be a regular normal um, Cluster Jewel, a medium Cluster Jewel with this node. Or you do it like I did with the Implicit with Ignite Spread because this is a radius of 17 while the Fan the Flames is a radius of 15, so it's a little bit bigger on that regard, but you're losing out on a little bit of fire.multi. Good. Do I need a headhunter or mageplot to make it work? No, absolutely not. This is like the difference is mageplot, in my opinion, is the most broken item in the game. It will make every build, no matter what build, even an SS drain build, um, it does not matter. Mageplot makes every build so much better, okay? I personally do not want to use Mageplot just because I feel like it's cheating because it solves build issues that, you know, just with a swap of a flask. I don't want to go too in-depth uh, in that, but, you know, I'm, I'm shit, I'm not Chaos res game. What do I do? Oh, let's take a rare Amethyst flask uh, and I get like a 50 all res or whatever, you know, it's like... Mage Blood is just cheating, and it would also make this build tremendously better if you put in like a headhunter, uh, like a Mage Blood, and like one or two inspired learnings and GG, you know. Um, when it comes to headhunter, I think this is a mapping exclusive item. It is a stat stick when it comes to bosses. It is very good for delirium maps. It is very strong for simulacrums and stuff like that. Since the headhunter buffs last for sixty seconds, but overall. Um, if you can afford one, I would highly recommend using one. If you do not have one, any rare belt will do. It's just important that you get your stats from somewhere. Because running this build with um, Determination as well as Haste are both two end game or end stat dexterity gems. Means they need like 155 or 159 if you go level 21 um, dexterity requirement. As well as if you go really end game and have an exploding bow, the bow will also take... A tremendous amount of uh, stats and there are some stats over here with like strength dexterity strength dexterity over here with the 30 notes but they are kind of bad to use because you want to have a lot of skill points uh, in this build like with any other build right so you want to make sure to have enough strength and dexterity um on your gear to actually equip your uh, your stuff and headhunter comes with like 60 strength and dexterity which helps you out quite a lot when it comes to like gearing so to answer that, do you need a headhunter? No, obviously not. If you have one, that's fine. If you're on a mage blood, that's even better, probably. If you don't have either, then it's totally fine as well. Obviously, if you don't steal the insane buffs, you're probably not gonna run around with 500% movement speed and you're gonna map slower. But we're talking about how does this build work, as well as what do you actually need to play it, and not what is the end game version. And I can guarantee you, if somebody gives me 10 mirrors, I would definitely find ways to invest 10 mirrors into the build. But is it necessary? I mean, that's why we play the game. We grind for currency, we want to make min-max characters, we want to have really good characters, and this is part of it, you know? But to crack it down to the bare bones to make it actually playable version, I think you can actually play this as a leak starter, and the leak starter obviously does not have a mage blood, a headhunter, inspired learnings, or anything of that kind. So, what are the mandatory items? This is actually something I did already explain on how much currency I need, the Gloomfang, the conversion and yeah from there on you go with like a flammability ring you can go with like a polaric devastation you can go with spell suppression you can go with an explodey bow you can go with a lot of things that will make the build better but what do you actually need gloomfang adds a shit ton of damage and you need to get 
the physical converted to cold because ethereal knives is a physical spell and so we want to get the conversion steps going to get the power out of gloomfang which is conversion from physical into cold in that case into fire um so that is mandatory all the rest is not i'm just thinking about the uh, jewels here cluster jewels and whatnot i don't think anything is necessary here i'm running three grand spectres to be ailment immune for now because i still need to craft my boots properly to get um the ailment immunity other than that um just a rare jewel with like life resistance fire dot multi and here i'm running an impossible escape somewhere um to get some more spell suppression over here none of that is required all of that will just make your build stronger good next question how does this build to deal damage scaling this is pretty much the same thing we are starting off as a physical spell a physical base and that means all forms of physical as extra will give us more damage physical as extra lightning is not that good because we are not going from lightning into cold conversion but physical as extra um cold physical as extra fire physical as extra chaos anything physical as extra um and the conversion and everything is good and that's why also people are running um quiver bases with um what is it warlord redeemer base and they slap together fizz extra cold from redeemer plus fizz extra fire awaken orb that together get some life resistance on it you know maybe even multi-mod um and this is how you get so much damage it's not just a pure fire build where you just want to have fire damage ignite damage over time multiplier or damage over time multiplier and those kind of things this build has so many scaling options because it is a physical base because we're using conversion so not only does our physical as extra work like even the obliteration one giving us um up to 40 percent physical as extra chaos which will give us more damage you know so it's not only the explodey here it's also the physics extra chaos because physical spells do have the biggest um scaling potential over here um, what are the layers of defense? So as of right now, we are running Eldritch Battery, Mind of a Matter, um, which is like 40% um, of damage is taken from mana before life. But since our energy shield is protecting our mana here, um, we're going to get energy loss. Okay, so this is a form of uh, defense because our EHP is not 3k or 3.2k of what I currently have. It is 3.2k plus the 1.5k um actually not really because 1.5k needs to be divided by 40 percent just because like it's 60 percent damage on life and 40 percent on our energy shield so you still gain up to like um a better effective hp while doing so why do we actually use eldritch battery first of all um we run a lot of auras and i currently only have eight mana so i wouldn't even be able to cast anything but i'm still able to do so just because we are running eldritch battery we're using our energy shield as our mana pool so i can like spam my ethereal knives that cost 88 mana and you see i have absolutely no problem sustaining that another good thing what that enables us is the use case of divine blessing with increased duration haste and malevolence what that does it actually costs oh shit why is that 19 percent quality oh my god i'm losing out on damage sheesh okay good fixed so what that does is I do have here my haste over here on W and R for malevolence. What I'm doing for mapping, I'm popping in haste. So you're casting that spell and you get a 25 or 27 seconds um, haste buff as an aura without reserving the mana. But the problem is Divine Blessing has a big chunk of ma uh, multiplier and a lot of mana cost. So this costs me 832 mana to cast. And this would be uh, like impossible to do if I wouldn't have Eldritch Battery. And I do have the same with Malevolence, but you can only run one aura at the same time. So if I'm swapping like from Eldritch Battery, you see that the other aura gets replaced. So what I'm doing is I'm running haste for mapping because I do not need a lot of damage for mapping, but I want to have speed. And, and the um, alternate quality haste also gives us projectile speed which also in increases um, our clear speed because the ethereal nice projectiles fly further so that means for mapping i'm always popping in haste and it becomes second nature that you press every 20 seconds one time haste and uh, you refresh the buff but as soon as you go for bossing the map boss you know i put down my hydrosphere or my arcanist brand i swap to malevolence i'm getting the more damage um for bossing have the big damage i just pretty much one shot the boss as soon as he's dead i'm swapping back to haste and maintain the good speed 
So without Eldritch Battery on Energy Shield recovering my mana or saving my mana, it would be almost impossible or it would be impossible unless I would not even run any auras um, to um, run this kind of setup. And I really enjoy running this setup. I wasn't a big fan of it in the start, but after running a couple of maps, I found it's absolutely no problem to run it. And I think it's like really, really good. On top of that, we do have armor. We run Determination. It is something it's not insanely much i'm also running a granite flask at 23,000 armor it is better than nothing okay it's not an armor stacker with like a hundred thousand it's not a champion with like 60,000 um physical damage mitigation um, armor but um i think that like 11 or 20,000 with your flask up is still better than having absolutely no defense right then with mind of a matter eldritch battery we also have like a more buffer for our hp and i'm currently building in spell suppression on top of that so you are actually able with like three items with spell suppression on them plus the spell suppression over here and if you run the uh, precise technique impossible escape jewel you also have um, access to this entire cluster so we get like i don't know like 50 percent or something from our tree and the other 50 percent from our uh, three item pieces as well as we have the spell suppression mastery that adds another 12 percent um if your boots helmet and gloves also have evasion good next question how do i trigger chain explosions so this is basically a known thing for ignite builds uh, overall you want to have either um that would be um barracks respite ring as we used to have on the older versions of um ignite proliferation things or the aberrate tubes for example or in this case we're running the um the ailment spread ignite to inflict spread to nearby enemies this basically leaves a fire circle and since we are um, elementalist all of our damage with hits ignite that also includes the explosions so i kill an enemy it has a chance to explode the explosion the overkill damage will trigger herald of ash the herald of ash will also leave a dot and since we're scaling fire damage ignite damage the herald of ash will actually kill off monsters as well so they will die again they leave the fire ex um the fire um what is it ex um spread basically on the floor the next monster gets inflicted by an ignite dies as well also leaves like uh, explodes and it's like a chain reaction of explosions of fire um spread ignite spread basically and the elementalist shaper um, of flames to always inflict ignite every explosion and this is like how this thing actually chains so well because ignite monster dies explodes inflicts more ignites leaves circles on the floor kills more monsters blah 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 and it also scales with aoe so the more aoe you have the further this thing will actually spread and this is like a pure joy to play and it's like it's just fantastic i cannot afford an explody base bow any substitution so there is multiple ways in the first place the most important thing is have any form of explosion obviously a physical explosion is better than a chaos explosion why is that because a physical explosion will also benefit from all our sources of damage. It will be affected by the conversion. It will be affected by physical as extra cold, as extra fire, and all these kind of things. Um, while the chaos explosion does not, because it is already chaos. And the conversion path is always physical, lightning, cold, fire, chaos. So if we go from physical into chaos explosion, we don't have any conversion. But the explosion itself, even though it's chaos, it will still deal so much damage... That it does way higher ignites than our ethereal knives will do but uh, on the next hand another problem here is why chaos explosions are not as strong as physical but you saw in the map showcase it's absolutely no problem um it is because shaper of flames it says 25 percent more damage with ignites you inflict um, with hits for which the highest damage type is fire so that means that only um hits that have like you know we have a portion of everything we have fire damage we have cold damage we have chaos damage we have physical damage if you don't have the full conversion going but the entire package will be our basic night damage okay but if of all of these sources of damage combined our fire damage is the highest we are also gonna get 25 percent more damage with this ignite and the thing is our physical explode will actually trigger that more damage our chaos will not because the explosion will do chaos damage and not fire damage and there is like a, a very funny thing here um that i had in my pub i don't know if i still have it in here um oh i actually do so see um actually this is overwrite so here's the thing 
um you want to make sure that your highest damage is fire and that means if you go into way too many ways of getting extra chaos damage with like the quiver base with fizz's extra chaos with sin's rebirth for example giving you unholy might 30 percent fizz's extra chaos and so on at some point you're gonna deal more chaos damage than you deal fire damage so you're losing out on 25% more damage. In my current version, I could actually run a Sins Rebirth. As you see, I go from 18.7 Malignite DPS to 19.4, but there I had um, in the previous version, that's why I'm actually swapped it out, because with Sins Rebirth, with the Unholy Might giving me 30% Fizz's Extra Chaos, I was having too much Chaos damage. So while getting 30% Fizz's Extra Chaos, my Ignite DPS was actually lower than before, because in the previous version, without the flask, I had more fire damage, benefiting from the 25% more damage from Shaper of Flame. So at the moment in my current version, I could actually run a Sins Rebirth again, because at some point, um, if, for example, here, highest damage type, default means that PUB will calculate it. If it's, for example, Chaos, you see that my damage is down to 15.5 million, if the highest damage hit was Chaos. If the highest damage hit is Fire, you see that it goes up to 19.4. So there's like a 4 million Ignite DPS difference if your highest damage hit was actually Fire. So it's very important to keep track of that in the PUB um, to actually guarantee that. But obviously, um, we are casting not one EK for bosses, we are casting permanently and refreshing our Ignites, right? So um, the way that damage is calculated, you always have a low roll and a high roll. Like, as you see here on the tooltip, Chaos Damage, 4.8 to 7,000 fire damage, 55 to 83. This obviously does not, in the tooltip, it's just wrong because um, we are chaining off that. It doesn't calculate the Gloom Fang, it doesn't calculate any of those kind of sources. But if we say we have a low roll and a high roll, so it can be that if you have a high roll on Chaos Damage and a low roll of Fire Damage, that the Chaos Damage could take over. But if we continuously spam our Ethereal Knives and reapply Ignite, then at some point you're gonna have Fire as your highest and benefiting from the 25% more damage. And on top of that, um, you want to like refresh your ignites anyways, because the way ignite works, you only have one ignite on the target. And if I'm spamming that, it's not always refreshing and removing the ignite. No, it will always take the highest ignite. So if my first ignite is higher than my second ignite, the second ignite will kind of get discarded or queued up to the end. So that means if the first, like, let's say my ignite lasts four seconds, the first ignite is already two seconds on, I do another ignite and that has lower ignite damage it will still deal two seconds of the remaining higher ignite and then the remaining two seconds of the lower ignite so it's very important to like keep on spamming your ability to inflict the highest ignite possible good can this build be played with other ascendancies um no unfortunately not because shaper of flames all damage can ignite this is the only way only hex blast actually has the same um kind of thing in the tooltip where it says your lightning damage can ignite, your fire damage can ignite. Um, you know, it just doesn't work like that. Shaper of Flames, all damage can ignite. I don't have to worry about anything. If you would play this as a Chieftain, getting 100% Fizz's extra fire is really nice. But I do not, my Chaos damage will not ignite. My Cold damage will not ignite. Nothing will ignite, right? So Elementalist is the way to go. Com Heart of Destruction, probably the strongest ascendancy in the entire game. The note here by 30% more elemental damage which benefits our ignites the mastermind of discord elementalist is the way to go you have to level up a new character if you don't have one how do you level this build so basically my build was already the uh, val arc ignite elementalist before that i farmed legion you know the the eternity shroud version but i can safely say wave of conviction ignite is the way to level this build should be the way to level this build. I have played Wave of Conviction Ignite multiple times. I played it as a League starter. I played it in a solo cell phone Delph event. It does work without any gear, without any scaling. You get free exposure. But once you gather your physical conversion, once you can equip Gloomfang, I think this is when you could potentially swap over to the Ethereal Knives version if you want to. What content can this build do? Pretty much every content based on your investment. If you run a 5 divine version, then no, you cannot do uber content. No, you cannot do uber uber labyrinth, you cannot do um, simulacrum 30, you cannot do 100% daily, it does not work, okay? But this build is capable and is proven by David 
Um, so let me quickly pull this one up, David uh, JWE. The link of his YouTube channel is in the description below if you want to check out his videos. He got a lot of content. Um, quickly, JWE. Um, he got like videos of like almost everything um, with this belt, okay? So if you go to his channel, he recently uploaded Simulacrum Wave 25 to 30. He, he did a complete forgotten run with all the synthesized map, plus the invitations were like 200 quant or something. He made the fear, he made Uber Uber Elder. He, he runs Blight Ravage tier 16 maps without building any towers and monsters spawn faster, a formed run, a normal clearing, a, you know, like, the build is able to do all content once you start investing into it, once you figure out to get the maximum out of the build. Obviously, the 5 Divine version will not do that, but um, sh seeing his videos means that it is possible. Grind it out, get your upgrades, and have success with the build, being able to run all content and not just mapping and not just whatever. So, I always end up dying um, with Zero Energy Shield um, what to do. Basically, I think this is like a low investment problem and I did have the same. I'm not gonna lie, in the start of the, um, in the start, I died like 200 times in the first 100 maps that I ran. It was annoying, it was frustrating, but, you know, I still grinded through, I didn't care. You know, cast and death portal, it was the solution. But what I, what I figured out is every time I had a dot, an ignite, a bleed, oh, sorry, ignite, bleed, any degen floor, I was just draining my energy shield, going down to zero and then um, since this is um, we need to wait for the recharge to kick in we have zero energy shield our mind of our matter is inactive in that case and we cannot even cast a single spell and this is like very very annoying and frustrating to do so I was even up to a point where I just um, unspec mind of a matter just to keep on mapping even though I was dying more frequently but at least I was able to cast my stuff so it was like very annoying and I think um, you need some kind of ES recovery, right? I figured out to get some spell leech into my build. I think nowadays with the gearing that I currently have, it's not necessary anymore because I'm never dropping down to zero anymore. But early on, I would say um, maybe some spell leech would help because you are leeching energy shield, you are leeching um, your source of casting your, your mana, basically. It's, it's like mana leech in that case, right? And it's very frustrating if you have to rely on the um, recharge to kick, uh, kick in. And the, the thing is like, while recharge, you need to wait a certain amount of time to actually like not getting damage for like two seconds or something to actually get the recharge to cast spells, the leech will be there. It doesn't stop, you know? So if you run, uh, if you do not, do not run deadly ailments because it has 80% less damage with hits resulting into lower instances of leech. But I personally found out if I take some spell leech over here, I did not have the problem anymore. At least I could cast spells and kill monsters because like running around having zero ES and then just like, oh my god, I need to not take damage and uh, I cannot cast spells, I'm just running away. It's like, it's very annoying. So I figured out with some spell leech, it was the solution. But later on, if you're ailment immune, um, if you cannot get any ignites anymore, if you're bleed immune or those kind of things, you probably will not get just one shot at and just lose all your mana in one hit uh, at all. And if you go to spell suppression route, we're actually recovering a bit of energy shield as well if we suppress spell damage. So this is something that only occurs if you have no gear, no nothing, whatever. So I would opt in into some spell leech. At least that's the way it helped me. So Arsenal's Gentle Touch versus Obliteration versus Explodey Bow. So the main problem here, and I was running the Arsenal's Gentle Touch for the majority of the time, and only today I swapped into Obliteration, which I think is the better version. As I explained before, yes, it is uh, a weaker version of Explosions, but I also guarantee you will not even notice the difference because the, you're dealing so much damage with those Explosions and the Ignites will just wreck everything in their way. Um, so the problem with Arsenal's is you're losing the Eldritch Implicits. Why are these gloves, the rear gloves, so important? Fire exposure, conversion. Without the gloves, you're not having 100% conversion. Without the fire exposure, you do not have a reliable way of inflicting fire exposure. So fire exposure is actually lowering the enemy resistance, which is a lot more damage because we're in an ignite-based build. But what it also does is we are having the mastermind of Discord. Exposures you inflict applies an extra 25 to affected resistance. So if we do... There is no way of triggering an exposure if we do not have the gloves implicit. 
There are other ways, for example, like uh, heraldry that I have over here somewhere, uh, heraldry, which basically says nearby enemies have fire exposures while affected by um, Herald of Ash, which I do have. There is also Master of Fire, the cluster jewel node, which says nearby enemies have fire exposure. The problem is we tested this in PvP, the radius is very small. If Lily is the boss, I literally have to go like this to give her fire exposure. If I step away like this, she doesn't have fire exposure anymore. So the fire exposure radius nearby is so small that not even when you fight bosses, you're standing next to the boss like that. No, you're gonna have some safe distance. We're a caster, right? We're gonna put down our Arcanist brand, our Hydrosphere next to the boss, and we're gonna attack from range. Means I'm way too far away to inflict fire exposure. So the only reliable, really reliable version of getting um, exposure is the Gloves Implicit, which is the uh, Eater of Worlds um, fire exposure. And applying a 14 fire exposure means it also activates and makes our 14 exposure to a 39 exposure. And 39 negative resistance, fire resistance to the enemy that is, is a lot of damage. So, you're gonna miss out on, on, the, on the full conversion of your ethereal knives, you're gonna miss out on like negative 40 fire resistance to the enemy while you're not having exposure, right? And you're gonna miss out on maybe some um, ignite spread, but this is not the worst because you can still get the ignite defend the flames from a cluster jewel, right? And that's why I say, yes, Asenuts will get you started and it's nice because it is a physical explosion, but we only have one curse, so it would also counter interact with something like a flammability on hit ring, right? Because we only have one curse unless you want to scale into Whispers of Doom that you can do. But that's why I say the we need the exposure as well as the conversion from our gloves. And that's why I think an obliteration for being cheaper is also better because we do have the rare gloves. And that also like fixing our uh, life resistance, whatever kind of needs do we have on the build. And the Exploding Bow would be the best version, but it's also over 100 Divines, and I don't think I need to talk about that. We're gonna get a Quiver with Double Fizzes extra. We do run a 6 link Enlightened setup um, in the Bow. It's just it's just very, very strong, but it's, like, literally un unaffordable. Um, the Eldritch Battery, Mind of a Matter, I did actually explain already with the um, Divine Blessing kind of like set up the way that we um, do have an 88 mana cost and we do have a lot of auras with that um, being determination, vitality, discipline, herald of ash, herald of purity and hatred, right? So there is a lot of auras that we're using. I currently run this with charisma, with mana reservation efficiency on the implicit as well as the essence craft over here. And now in my current version with running a level one vitality, I would like to get this one higher at some point. Um, you can actually run like a level 20 or something if you actually run a bow with the enlightened setup. But um, as of right now, I'm actually was able with the helm enchant as well. Can be hatred, can be determination, can be any other other uh, big aura. Um, you are actually able to reserve that. You could also go in for like some um, energy shield mastery with another 25% mana reservation efficiency when it comes to discipline. So everything works here. You just need to adapt to the situation um, to get your auras in, or you just skip one aura and that might actually be hard to say. I think probably Herald of Purity. It might actually be more damage than Herald of Ash, but hey, Herald of Ash explosions are good. They look good, they feel good, and yeah, that's for me reason more to take that, right? Can this build be played as a Magic Finder? Yes, it can be played. Kobe Black Mamber did play this recently as a Magic Finder. I personally, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but there is another guy that is uh, probably known for this build, which is this guy. He's called Top Secret Meta. He plays this with Goldworm Boots, with Venter's Gamble, and having some uh, Magic Find and Rarity on his gear. So yes, you can play this. And this is like the thing, you can play every build. Every single build can be played as a magic finder. Slap on as much as quantity rarity as you can get and try to maintain the speed of mapping as if you would play without magic find, okay? If magic find starts to slow you down, if magic find is the reason why you're dying all the time, um, then it's probably not worth to go for magic find. I personally don't like it just because I like my build as a well-rounded beast. You know, if I want to run an invitation, I can do that. If I want to do an uber boss, I can do that. If I want to run lab, I can do that. If I want to run 100% daily, I can do that. If I want to run simulacrum, I can do that. I just need to pop it in and, and start running, right? While full magic find characters, they are literally living off headhunter and if you don't have the right buffs, you're just dying non-stop and it's just, it's just frustrating or at least I'm not the biggest fan of it.
And then lastly, the possible upgrade path, what would be my next possible upgrade path or yours? If you would say, yo, I'm running a tabby, I'm running an obliteration one. I just recently picked up like, or had some sales. I farmed like a hundred divines, I farmed 10 divines. What would be the next upgrades? Um, a Polaric Devastation gives you quite a lot of damage and I think they're not too expensive if you are um, not going for like a perfect roll or something like 40c. You definitely feel the difference, just make sure you have it in the left ring slot so you cover enemies in Ash. Then a potential um, flammability on hit ring, this can be an implicit ring, it can be a fractured ring, anything that gives you flammability because flammability gives you a lot of damage. You can opt in into spell suppression. You could go for an explodey bow if you have the currency. You could go for adding um, ignite spread, exposure, those kind of thing as your implicits. You can go and get more mana reservation efficiency to maybe get more hours in. You can upgrade your gems with like awakened uh, gems and so on. Um, you can upgrade to a skin of the loyal because 100% global defense is a very, 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 very strong stat because we are having armor, we're having energy shield, and in my version I also have a little bit of evasion, and that scales all three, okay? You could technically run um, an exploded chest, but in my opinion, the 100% global defense is just way too powerful. As soon, like, I was dying non-stop with my tabula, and I was stuck on, like, level 93, and as soon as I got the skin of the loyal, uh, I wasn't, like, dying too much anymore, and now I made, like, three and a half levels already, and I'm actually thinking about going this build to level 100 just by mapping and simulacrums and five ways and whatnot. So, a skin of the loyal or skin of the lord is a very big increase in damage and survivability so i do definitely recommend doing that and the next thing is it does not necessarily have to be three red two green one blue because these chests obviously are in high demand right now in both the skin of the lords with mind of a matter or um, the skin of the loyal but you can also run it with like a double blue setup with a triple green setup you know just check part of the building what would be the next possible um Thing here like deadly ailments would be very strong um, but that is the problem that you would leech less you know but that would um open up one so you would put away um burning damage and get in deadly ailments and all of a sudden you're running three green setup it might be a little bit less damage but if it's affordable then it's still gonna be stronger you can run cruelty which would be a, a triple a, a quadra red gem setup you could also run an efficacy support or ignite proliferation which would give you a double blue so um, the undisputed best version might actually be, here it also says that Awakened Deadly Ailments, that would be a triple red, triple green based on Bath of Building to give the highest uh, damage. But um, in my opinion, you want to also have a solid uh, Ignite Duration, so I'm going for uh, Unbound Ailments because my current um, Ignite Duration is like 4.5 seconds or something. You maybe want to add some Ignite faster later on to increase your DPS, and if your Ignite only lasts for like 2 seconds, um, you're not gonna have like massive chain reactions or you know you always have to, it just doesn't feel like a dot build if it doesn't have like at least four seconds duration so yeah i'm running a less damaged version while opting in an unbound ailment but i just want to tell you guys um it does not have to be three red two green one blue this is just what i'm running if it's like like one like if this chest is like 100 divines and the one with like three green two red is like one divine then please take the one for one divine and just skip out on like uh and take a little bit of a weaker support gem and you still be fine i would definitely recommend running something like global defense other than that flask set up my current pub is in the description below but i would definitely recommend uh, checking out david's videos and his pubs if you want to see the full power of this build Good. I hope I could cover a lot of things, a lot of misconceptions on how to scale this build, how to build it properly, what is definitely necessary, what is not necessary. You know, just because somebody says you need a headhunter doesn't mean you actually need a headhunter. It just means that this guy has just no fucking clue what he's talking about. Does it make the build better? Yes, of course. Is it necessary? No, obviously not. So don't get fooled by other people that have literally less plan about the game. Um, then you probably have because you actually was asking the question in the first place, okay? So, alright guys, I think that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, and see you in the next